All right, Halloween's right around the corner, assuming I managed to get this video done on time, and we all know what that means. Costumes, candy, creepy decorations, because October is the one beautiful month of the year where we get to celebrate the macabre and not be called weird for it, which makes it the perfect time for a good old-fashioned horror movie, or a series of horror movies, or a marathon, or a double feature. In double feature, I want to bring up two movies that pair well together for, well, a double feature. In this case, two somewhat similar yet contrasting horror films, Suspiria and Next of Kin. Let's start with Suspiria. Suspiria is undoubtedly one of Dario Argento's best known films, if not his best known outright. The 1977 Italian horror classic concerns Susie, an American who travels to Germany to attend a ballet school, but upon arriving discovers weird circumstances, disappearances, and finds herself diving deeper into the secrets of the school, putting herself in grave danger. Suspiria is a very important horror movie, highly influential and considered a classic, and with good reason. Behind the scenes, there are a lot of technical innovations and insistences on using older techniques that give the movie its dreamlike, unreal aesthetic. Lights with fabric filters instead of gel, which was the standard, to allow the movie to really flood its shots with colors close to the actors' faces. It's processing in three-strip technicolor, a process that was considered antiquated at the time, a score that used unconventional tricks and techniques of the time. All these things combined to make Suspiria what it is. It occupies a style of movies known as giallo, essentially Italian exploitation cinema. So even though it concerns itself with the supernatural and these sorts of grandiose ethereal horror dreamscapes, it still shares the DNA with slasher movies at times. It's colorful and trashy, for lack of a better word. Not pretending to be deep prestige horror. It's not overtly terrifying. There is a definite layer of separation between the film and the audience. But what you do get is one hour and 40 minutes of being steeped in larger than life, beautiful, otherworldly imagery. It's an experience less about understanding the work and picking it apart, and more about letting its visual sort of wash over and envelop you. I feel fairly confident in saying Next of Kin is much less known than Suspiria. It's an Australian horror film described as Suspiria Down Under, or If Argento Made The Shining. It's seen praise from the likes of Tarantino and appeared in the documentary Not Quite Hollywood for its deliberate pacing and claustrophobic horror. What I was most struck by watching it in terms of its style was the sound design, which I'll expand on a little bit later, and also its style of escalation. The story is passable. It's fine, even if its structure's mystery kind of breaks down. But this movie is really like Suspiria about its tone and its atmosphere. It feels toned down and minimalist for a lot of its actual horror moments and really lets its characters breathe and interact with the space around them, making its bombastic ending all the more left field and ultimately an entertaining catharsis to the overall experience. This brings us to the final part of the recommendation. These two movies make a great double feature not just because of their similarity, but because of their differences. Broadly, they sort of have a similar plot, I suppose. Woman out of her element enters a mysterious strange building and discovers something bizarre happening. But the style of Suspiria is balls to the wall and completely all cylinders firing at all times, whereas Next of Kin switches up its style in really interesting ways that, when viewed back to back, almost feels like they're riffing on Suspiria, specifically. Music and sound design is a big one. Suspiria more or less employs a strategy of music whenever and wherever something is happening, which I feel gives audiences a feeling of separation, of safety. You're always that one layer of separation away from the characters themselves because the music keeps you grounded, aware of the line between fiction and reality. Next of Kin, when you watch this as a double feature, feels like it plays off that sense of safety. It lets its music build up like Suspiria, building up to a climactic moment or scare, and then, coinciding with some normal noise like a book closing or a doorknob turn, it shuts the music off. That sense of safety you had through Suspiria and thought you were going to have through Next of Kin is gone. You're left with sound design that really emphasizes the noises of old houses like creaky floors and loud doors, random noises echoing in the night. Their depictions of the buildings themselves also differ. Suspiria, as with everything, takes a maximalist approach here, steeping the school in brightly lit primary colors and using changing scenery to engross you in an otherworldly dream space, away from any feeling of danger, but in the perfect place to fully appreciate its stage building and sense of space. 
to get an outside view on the surreal hell of its locations. Next of Kin, on the other hand, gives its spaces a real sense of being occupied and lived in, but still keeps them just alien and strangely put together enough to make the viewer uncomfortable. It's not quite on the level of The Shining's nonsensical architecture or anything. It feels like a real home, just one of the general feeling of not being one that should actually be lived in, as if it was supposed to be abandoned but isn't because of the unfinished business and unprocessed trauma of its characters drawing them back in. I've been focusing on differences, I know, but just two completely different movies don't really make for a good double feature. There is a core similarity here, a reason why Next of Kin is hailed as Suspiria Down Under. It utilizes its gothic imagery even in the quiet moments, and a similar feel to Suspiria, even if Suspiria drowns its imagery in color more. Next of Kin may be more reserved while Suspiria is consistently overt but they both share nightmarish qualities that make great use of their locations and have an expert handle on the sonic and spatial awareness of scenes that are often similar yet completely distinct. And that's what makes this a great double feature.